You're watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. So in the today's episode, I'm going to be talking more about large lockbacks. This is essentially going to be a continuation from the last episode. The only difference being that I talked about Rough Riders last episode. We're going to dive into some other brands this time around. I've got seven different knives to show you. But before I do that, I must discuss a couple of guys in the knife community who have traded stickers with me. And I want to highlight their channels today and talk a bit about the type of content that they provide and just the type of guys they are. Uh, the first one up is William's Knife Life. William uh, was one of the first people I latched onto whenever I began the channel and began watching a lot of videos by different content creators in the knife community. He makes some great content. The 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 majority of his knife reviews are Rough Riders, but not all of them. He has a lot of fixed blade stuff and stuff from other brands. And talks about a wide range of different products. Um, doesn't always discuss just knives. Sometimes he'll, he'll talk about uh, some event in his day, or he may talk about, uh, you know, put on a old Western and do dialogue over the top of it and tell a funny story. He just has some varied content, and it's really entertaining. And I just really appreciate William and what he does. And um, I find what he does so entertaining that um, he's going to be one of my, my favorite channels. So, William, thank you for uh, trading stickers with me, and thank you for welcoming me into the community um, with open arms. And uh, I really appreciate uh, all the comments that you leave. And he's just a great guy, great sense of humor, has a lot of fun. And uh, he likes beavers, like I. So there you have William Knife Life. All right. Up next, we have Tobias. Now, Tobias is probably one of the most informed uh, reviewers and creators. He has a really wide-ranging uh, cataloged mind of different patterns and can tell you the history of a lot of different things and has been uh, into the Rough Riders for the longest time, which is some of the most interesting uh, content for me because uh, I find the older Rough Riders to be quite entertaining. Uh, well, not just entertaining, but also uh, interesting in, in trying to collect. So the information that he provides is very valuable to me because then I can learn about uh, sort of the order of things before I got into the hobby and before I really got to latch on to these Rough Riders and learned about them. So the stuff, you know, prior to me starting to collect, um, he can tell me things about that I don't know. So Tobias is really good about uh, letting you know uh, the weaknesses and strengths of the knives that he collects. And uh, he's not shy about telling you why he doesn't like particular things like uh, the Robert Townsend bolsters. Uh, maybe like the can openers on the recent uh, releases of Rough Riders of the Camp Knives. Um, yeah, he doesn't shy away from, uh, some of the more, uh, less appealing aspects of what Rife Rider's doing, and he kind of is the voice of reason a lot of times for, uh, some of the stuff that they do, and, um, but still appreciated because he's always objective and fair, um, you know, he's not gonna, for instance, say, put off Frost just because of their reputation, he, uh, he knows that they made some good knives, and, He's going to tell you when they do, and uh, he's just real honest and straightforward, and he likes kitty cats, and so do I, and uh, you need to tell me about this sticker, though, Tobias. I'm not familiar with this sideshow of scale styrene. I'm assuming it's some sort of a, a scale models or some sort. Uh, if you have another channel, I'm not aware of it, so maybe just uh, let me know in the comments what what this uh, the sticker's all about. But uh, for those that didn't know, and I'm just pointing this out because I only it only struck me as I began looking at that uh, photo of Tobias, is that he's holding a hobo knife and he's a hobo. Why I never realized or put that together, I don't know. <laughs> but there you have it. I do recognize that, Tobias. So if anyone hasn't ever pointed that out to you before, at least I have. Yes, the hobo holding a hobo knife. Okay. Well, thank you, Tobias, and thank you, William. I really appreciate you guys' efforts in the community and the content you provide.
Okay, so thank you guys very much, and you are very much appreciated. All right, let's move on into the reviews of the lockbacks. The first one up is this Right Edge. This is model number 210823. Or excuse me, dash SH, which means that it comes with a sheath. You can also buy it without, I believe. But for six dollars sixty-one cents on Chicago Knife Works, I don't know why you wouldn't want the sheath. Just a basic snap sheath with the vertical type belt loop. And here's the knife. Again, this is Right Edge, R I T E E D G E. There's a tank stamp there on there. You can recognize that. This is a pack of wood handle, stainless bolsters and liners, and you got brass pins. Uh, pretty hefty, uh, pretty weighty. The blade uh, is not specified, the material is not specified, but uh, you get this nice saber grind and nail nick and I'm gonna assume that the blade material is 3 CR 13 mauve. Let's go ahead and weigh this. Now you'll remember that the uh, Rough Riders came in at around 5.8 ounces thereabouts. They were a little different based on the handle. Uh, this is very similar at 5.866, call it 5.87 ounces. And again to remind you the the 110 is 7.3, basically, 7.28. So you're coming in, you know, about one, one and a half ounces lighter. Um, pretty solid lockup, no wobble or anything like that. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's a right edge. You're not going to get the best blade material. And, and the handles are nice, just because I think Packwood's a really good economical choice. But um, yeah, they're not expensive uh, to produce. So the most basic materials here, six dollars sixty one cents on Chicago Knife Works. All right, up next we have a bit of a hybrid. This is an IXL three from IXL slash Parker. Back when Parker bought out IXL, they Sort a bunch of blades away from 1980s made in Japan and then brought them over to the U.S. And then when uh, Parker was dissolved, then it was picked up by someone else, I think. And then they made the handles for these older blades. So the blade is from the 80s. The handle is from more recent times. I couldn't tell you exactly when. And I couldn't tell you exactly who made these. They came bulk packed. So there's no box or information with them. You can get them on Blade Matrix for about $8.85, just under $9. They come with these layered black wood handles, uh, stainless bolster, no bolster on the end here. Their cat bolsters, you know, not there. It's just a bare head. And you've got these uh, brass liners with the stainless lock and the 440C stainless blade. Again, this is that Weston home there so this is the real deal ixl blade and there's japan on the back and it'll tell you that uh, yeah these were made in japan so it was a little bit of a hybrid design here you can get these again at blade matrix for about nine dollars i don't think they have a whole lot of them left i've seen seen one of these on uh, ebay for about twenty dollars used i don't know that i'd buy that but uh, um they are available occasionally used online or sometimes new on ebay but here is the weight of this one, just over five ounces, so a little lighter than that right edge. Um, doesn't have that rear bolster, and that's probably why. But a solid knife, um, good blade for 40C stainless steel. A good option for you guys if you like these without the rear bolster. The only thing about that is it's a little heavy in the uh, forward. Well, a little less balanced, I'd say, because of the the weight all at the front. All right, up next we've got the Schrade Uncle Henry LB7 Bear Paw. Now the Schrade is being made by Battenfield now. This is an older Taylor's model. You can tell by the box. Um, of course, Taylor's sold out in 2014. This box has 2006, but I don't know how close to 2014 that would have been. But uh, in any case, it comes with a leather case, and you'll need to check to make sure if you do get an LB7 that yours does, because I've seen them with um, nylon cases now, 
So I'm not sure if they're continuing to make these with the leather cases or they're offering only the nylon case. But this is the it's probably the second weightiest of the buck ten, uh, the 110 copies. Um, the Uncle Henry LB7. You have the 7CR17 blade with the saber grind and nail neck here. Um, I'm seeing both brass bolsters and nickel silver bolsters based on different descriptions, so I'm not exactly sure the material of the bolsters, but you got brass pins here and brass liners and a layered wood handle, uh, probably some sort of, well, it's a laminate. I'm not exactly sure what type of wooden material, but um, probably a pack of wood. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. It just says wood. It didn't really describe it. But uh, again, leather sheath, and there, there's the back. You got the button close on the sheath, and we'll take a quick weight measurement of this, and you'll see that this weighs 7.17 ounces, and the buck 110 again was 7.2. So only about a tenth of the difference there in ounces. Uh, second heaviest weight knife really nice uh, quality knife and uh, these run about $23.46 um, on Chicago Knife Works all right up next we have the old timer 70t which is the cave bear okay here's your box this is the Battenfield newest Chinese made knives from Battenfield for old timer brand there again, 7OT. Now, the one I have here, again, came in a leather case, but you'll want to check to make sure that that's the case if you order. Uh, these aren't quite as nice as the Uncle Henry sheaves I just showed you. Not near as supple. They're much more lower quality leather, but they are indeed leather. And here's the knife. Now, uh, these have the uh, saw cut handles that are not Delrin, they're more the more recent type of plastic um, which I don't like quite as much but you do have nickel silver bolsters on either end and nickel or excuse me brass pins and then a nickel silver shield that says old timer there and you have 7CR17 mauve blades with that saber grind there's your shred and then on the back the model number 70T so there you have that. The um, again, the sheath may or may not come with one you order, so make sure you check. This came in at twenty four dollars ninety four cents um, on Amazon, and I'll provide a look at that really quick. But there you have it: the Schrade Seven OT Cave Bear. Okay, up next we have another old timer. This one a little different though. This is the Old Timer 6OTW, which is the Golden Bear and wood, as an ironwood handle. Again, from Battenfield, Chinese made 6OTW. Comes with this leather sheath. And uh, again, it's a uh, vertical style, exactly the same style sheath as the 7OT. Just to snap close, um, still kind of that cheaper leather. But here is the knife. Now you'll notice it doesn't have the rear bolster as a bear head. There's no cap bolster there, so this is going to be a little lighter. You get the stainless steel shield and uh, no, I'm sorry, nickel silver shield with the old timer logo, nickel silver bolster with that yellow tinge to it, and some brass liners, and this nice desert ironwood handle. It comes with it. Now these run uh, about $22 on Chicago Knife Works. Here's your blade again, that Saber Grind, Nail Nick. And there's the Schrade logo and then 6OTW. So I offer a normal 6OT that you can get, which is just the bare, bare head style folder without this handle material the Dell run instead but uh, I figure for $22 you might as well go ahead and get the wood handle again 7CR17 mauve so same material as the other two knives let's weigh this one okay 
it's going to be quite a bit lighter just based on how it's feeling in the hand. 5.2 ounces. So again, the 6OTW from Old Timer. All right, up next we've got an option from Buck. Now, I don't have a box for this because it was clam packed, but it's the Buck 110 LT, and I bought this at Walmart. It comes with this nylon sheath, and it's a pretty slim design. It fits really well. It's like custom fit for this knife. It fits really good. Um, and you get these black nylon handles. It makes it considerably lighter. Uh, the construction, you know, it's a little bit lacking. I'm not a huge fan of that pivot, but uh, it seems rugged, rugged enough. Uh, you get a lanyard hole on this one, and again, you get the 420HC high carbon steel from one buck, and these are made in America. These are USA made, just uh, a lighter plastic material, and because this came from Walmart, you'll notice that this has the handle that uh, is available only from Walmart. Uh, just a slight difference in the logo size when you... Uh, Look at the others. They just have a much smaller logo on the handle than these Walmart, made for Walmart handles. So sort of exclusive to Walmart. Now these come in at $20 from Walmart. Again, 420 high carbon steel there. And these are tempered uh, really well. So they last longer than your typical 420 in terms of its sharpness. And they'll, they'll stay sharp quite a bit longer than just your typical 420. Um... But the handle material is pretty light. Uh, I think the next one is probably a better value than this when we take a look at that. But here is the, the weight of that one. Considerably lighter. Just 3.2 ounces. So here you go. Another option. This one comes with that nylon sheath. $20 at Walmart. I think they may be like $22 from Chicago Knife Works. All right, next we have the last but not least, the Buck 110 Slim Select Hunter. And your category number there is a catalog number. It's 12695. And comes in this little box. No sheath with this one at all. A little different. Um, but you do get some other things. You get this glass reinforced nylon handle. This one is in olive drab. They come in different colors. Um, they come in tan, gray, black, and some of the older discontinued colors. I know they had a red and a blue. I think they may also come out in an orange. I'm not sure if that one's discontinued or not yet, but um, more of a fluorescent orange. Now, this comes with the thumb stud, and I'm not well practiced with it, but uh, it's a slow roller. Um, I'll, I'll need more time with it to get a little better with it. Again, the 420HC blades there, and these... This thumb uh, stud does roll over, so you should be able to do it with either side. Again, you get the same kind of pivot that you do on the LT, uh, and same kind of rivet on this, but this handle material is seems quite a bit more rigid and uh, better in the hand, has a better feel in the hand. Um, you get this uh, deep carry pocket clip. The problem with it, though, is that the screws are not recessed, so that might be an issue, nor is the clip. It doesn't go into the handle. And it does appear to be reversible, though, so you can move it to the other side. Um, you know, for us left-handers, that can be important sometimes. Now, this one is an olive drab. That's the color I opted for. But, uh, again, these come in multiple colors. Um, that glass reinforced nylon there. And there is uh, a look at the logo that uh, I think is more similar to the logo you get on the LT when you don't buy it at Walmart. All right, let's take a look at this. This is the lightest by four, eh, maybe not, 3.048. Um, if we look at that uh, LT again, we'll compare. So yeah, this is... This is a sturdier handle and yet even a little bit lighter, even with the clip. So the material is just a little more advanced than that nylon that you get with the LT. So 3.048, I believe this is the lightest of all the ones that you have an option for. And again, from Buck. So there you have it, guys. All these options for these 110 
knockoffs, copies, uh, alternatives, whatever you'd like to say. And uh, I think among all the ones that I've showed, uh, I would say that the best value is by far this uh, this uh, IXL if you can find them on Blade Master, uh, Blade Matrix, excuse me. Um, just with the ability to get that 440C blade uh, for like nine dollars before shipping, pretty good deal out of Japan. You know, the blade was out of Japan. Um, but all of these are pretty decent options. Uh, you know, the sort and the right edge is the most affordable. So whatever your budget, there's one for you. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I hope I provided some information that was useful and some of these weights and kind of give you an idea of what you um, your preferences might be and then be able to align that with something that I showed today. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you're notified of new videos when they drop. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and take care.